Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap, we an action, drama, and crime movie from 2017 called Brawl in Cell Block 99. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The film starts with Bradley towing a vehicle to his workplace garage. His boss was already there, looking to have a serious chat with him. Bradley, noticing his boss's odd demeanor, was curious about the discussion topic. His hunch was right. He was let go because of financial troubles. Shortly after, Bradley packed up and left the garage. When he got home, he saw his wife, Lauren, making a call from a car outside their home. Suspicious, Bradley approached and opened the car door, sharing the news of his job loss. During their conversation, he noticed lipstick marks on her neck. Overcome with jealousy, he grabbed her phone to see who she'd been calling and discovered she'd been talking to another man. Upset, he demanded she go inside. Then he took out his frustration on her car, hitting the side mirror and yanking off the hood. Inside, Bradley confronted Lauren, asking how long the affair had been. She confessed to seeing someone else for three months, explaining she felt neglected after miscarriage while Bradley was too caught up in work. After sharing their thoughts and feelings, Bradley suggested they begin afresh and Lauren agreed. Having lost his job at a garage, Bradley decided to work with a guy named Gil, who was involved in drug trafficking. Lauren was against this idea, but Bradley felt he had no other choice due to the tough job market. Eight months later, Bradley started working as a drug courier, delivering packages and seeing his family's financial situation improve significantly. They moved to a nicer, larger home and Lauren was expecting again. One day, while at home with Lauren, Bradley received a call from Joe, who wanted him to meet a new associate, Elizar. Elizar, a slick man with black hair, ran a major drug operation out of Mexico and brought along two hefty men, Roman and Pedro, as bodyguards. Elizar wanted these men to join Bradley on his jobs, but Bradley was hesitant, especially since Roman seemed to be under the influence. Despite Bradley's concerns, Jill and Elizar insisted, promising Bradley a break when his child was born. Bradley agreed, under the condition that he'd be in charge and Elizar's men would follow his lead. They all agreed, and Bradley and Elizar's crew set out on a mission to retrieve a drug shipment hidden in underwater at a dock. They all boarded a small yacht and headed out to sea. Once they were far from shore, the yacht stopped and Pedro dived into the ocean to get the drug package. He found a large chest-like box secured with chains which he opened using the crowbar. Quickly, he grabbed all the drug packets and swam back up to the surface and then they started heading back to the dock. Bradley felt they might run into the police on their return, so he told Roman and Pedro to throw the drugs overboard. They refused and argued with Bradley, leading to a fight between them. Eventually, Bradley split from them. When they got to the dock's parking area, the police were already there, surrounding Roman and Pedro, and a gunfight broke out. Bradley saw this from a distance and hurried back to the yacht. On his way, a police officer approached him, asking for help. To avoid suspicion, Bradley acted like a regular person helping out and ended up shooting Roman and Pedro. Pedro was killed in the shootout, and Bradley was arrested and taken to the police station. At the station, a detective interrogated Bradley and realized he was smart and capable of deception. Nonetheless, the police were not easily fooled. Bradley was eventually put on trial, found guilty of murder and illegal weapons possession, and sentenced to seven years in prison. After the sentencing, he was transported to jail on a prison bus. When Bradley got to the prison, he had a health checkup. After this, an older inmate named Lefty led Bradley to his cell at the top of the building. There, a guard named Andre briefed him on the prison rules. That night, the bell rang and all the prisoners lined up outside their cells for inspection. Bradley, however, was asleep and didn't join until he was woken up and scolded by the guard for not following the rules. Meanwhile, at Bradley's house, Lorna was startled awake by an intruder who used a stun gun on her, causing her to pass out. She was then kidnapped and taken to an unknown location. The next day, Bradley was called to see a prison staff member named Denise, who informed him that an obstetrician requested to meet him. It turned out that the obstetrician was associated with his wife. When Bradley met the so-called Dr. Pellman at the prison, it was revealed that Pellman was one of Elazar's men. 
He came to inform Bradley that his boss has lost a significant amount of money because of Bradley's boss drug transaction. Thelma then showed Bradley a photo of Lauren bound and unconscious as proof of the dire situation. Dr. Pellman warned Bradley that Lauren's pregnancy would be terminated unless Bradley did what Eliezer wanted. They agreed that Bradley must eliminate an inmate named Christopher Bridge serving a life sentence located in another facility, cell block 99. After his meeting, Bradley was being taken back to his cell when he suddenly attacked the guard Andre with his shoes, causing a fight. Bradley instigated the fight purposefully, hoping to get moved to cell block 99 at Red Leaf, a higher security separate prison. He managed to overpower Andre, but soon other guards intervened and subdued him. Eventually, after being subdued by an electric shot from a guard, Bradley got his wish. Upon arrival at Red Leaf Prison, the warden greeted him, cautioning him about the slim chances of release from this high security facility. After a health check, Bradley was taken to cell 59, which was different from his previous cell. The new cell was filthy, dark, and reeked of waste from prior inmates. Overwhelmed by the cell, Bradley used his shirt to block the odor. Later, he was taken outside for an hour of fresh air where he met a young inmate named Derek. Bradley questioned Derek about an inmate named Christopher Bridge, but Derek didn't recognize the name. Despite being advised against it, Bradley went over to some inmates who were working out, which inevitably led to a fight. Bradley managed to take down several inmates before the guards intervened with warning shots. Undeterred, Bradley confronted the guards and was eventually subdued and taken blindfolded to the cell block 99 and isolated the area underground. Upon arrival and removal of his blindfold, Bradley observed the surroundings of cell block 99 before being placed in his cell. He was fitted with an electric shock jacket. The scene shifts to show Lauren appearing tired while held captive in a secret location with Dr. Pellman and a Korean doctor who is an abortion specialist present. Although they hadn't performed an abortion, they had conducted an initial examination on Lauren. Back in prison, Bradley, weak and desperate, yelled out for Christopher Bridge, only to be told by a neighboring inmate that no one by that name was there. Guards soon came to electrocute him, leaving him further debilitated. The warden then informed Bradley that some inmates wished to meet him in the basement. To Bradley's surprise, one of the inmates he was taken to meet was Elazar. Elazar revealed that the mission to kill Christopher Bridge was a trick to get Bradley transferred to cell block 99 for Elazar to exact his revenge. Elazar was furious over the $3.2 million loss and the personal repercussions of Bradley's actions, which included his imprisonment and his sister becoming a widow after Bradley killed her husband, Pedro, during the earlier shootout at the dock. Bradley was subjected to severe torture, leaving him weak. During his ordeal, he was shown a picture of his wife, Lauren, appearing weak and powerless as well. After enduring the torture, Bradley was thrown back into his cell. Despite his weakened state, Bradley managed to return to the area where Elazar and his men were, and he fought back, defeating Elazar's men one after the other until only Elazar was left. Bradley then overpowered Elazar, demanding that he instruct Dr. Pellman to stop the planned abortion for his wife and to ensure Lauren was taken to Gail's place. Bradley's demands were met after he inflicted a serious injury on Elazar by breaking his leg. Once Lauren was safely at Gil's house, Gil eliminated Dr. Pellman and the abortion specialist from a fire with a rifle. Back in prison, Bradley got confirmation on a cell phone that Lauren was safe. He then recorded a heartfelt message for his unborn child, expressing his wishes for the child's health and intelligence, saddened by the realization that he would never meet his child. Following the call, Bradley confronted Elizard again, this time fatally wounding him. The prison warden then arrived and shot Bradley in the head. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.